I'm trying really hard not to shop so much this year, but sometimes I just feel kind of bored with my crafty stash. Here's 18 ideas for refreshing your stash and your card making. The best part? They won't cost you a thing. The easiest and most impactful idea is to try a new color combination. If you struggle coming up with color combinations, just Google it. I Googled summer color combinations and I'm getting lots of bright aquas, pinks and yellows, and I just scrolled until I came up with something I like. My next step is to try and translate those colors into the inks I have. I bet many of you, like me, see colors in the terms of your favorite inks, and my magnetic swatch system allows me to easily grab the colors I think are closest and play around with them. And one other note, even when you own the whole ink collection, you will often find that the colors don't match exactly. I think that glam is a bit darker than the purple in my swatch, so you can either compromise or adapt, which I'll talk about in a minute. My next idea for refreshing your stash is to grab one of those new, unused goodies that you probably have. I have an unused tag in my electronic inventory system that I apply whenever I buy something new, and I remove it once I've used it. This is like an electronic version of a physical bin of new items that I can sort through to find something I want to use. I think this pretty stencil from Stamperia will work. Or is it Stamperia? It's a new company to me, so I'm not sure. Step number three is to go back and find some old favorites that you haven't used in a long time. I resorted my notes by date order and I went back. You can see that a lot of my oldest items are Christmas themed and probably not appropriate for today. But wait, this old Stamplerations butterfly mask is a classic and timeless and it's perfect for a summer card. I'm not sure if it's still available, but I'll link it if I can find it along with all the supplies I'm using today in the video description below. My next idea for refreshing is to challenge yourself to try a different card size or format. Now I can't get my head around a slimline card, but I thought a 5x7 would be a good challenge for me, as well as allowing me to make the most use of this butterfly mask, which I've pressed down onto my white cardstock with some pixie spray to hold it in place. The cardstock is being held in place by my Altenew sticky mat, which I've removed from the base to make it easier to blend ink at the top and the bottom of the panel. Remember that glam ink that I thought was dark? Well, I decided to go one tone lighter with Flirty Fuchsia and then blend the glam only at the bottom to try and get a tone that was closer to my color swatch. Ink blending is one of my go-to techniques in mediums, but you could also try a medium that you don't use very often. I think for this, sprays would work or maybe watercolors. I have them both, but I don't use them often. Maybe that's something for next time. Because while I want to refresh my stash, I still want to enjoy the process and knowing how far to push and when to stop is part of that. And I also want to do my next idea, which is to try a new technique. I'm going to use this pretty stencil with some solar paste. Now I used this paste last week and so it's not brand new to me, but I'm definitely still figuring it all out and I can use some practice. And I know how the paste does over ink and at this point, I don't want to add in a wild card of experimenting with it over another medium that I'm less familiar with. I'll save that for another day. Already I've learned that I need to put quite a bit of paste down at the top of the panel and then I use that flat edge on the tool to drag it down over the panel and spread it evenly. This paste is mostly white with some shimmery mica in it, so even though I chose the pink one, the effect should end up being pretty subtle. And while that's drying, I'm going to work on my sentiment. And rather than a die cut word or a stamp sentiment strip, I grabbed this Happy Butterflies stamp set from Catherine Pooler, and I chose one that best matches the butterflies on my stenciled panel, along with a congrats sentiment from the roundabout sentiment set. I think a butterfly is a great symbol of change and forward movement, and this will make a perfect graduation card for someone who would prefer a card not made with their school colors. I stamped my sentiment in black, which is another habit you could change up, but I've tried it and I rarely like how it turns out. Here's another easy idea for changing things up. I almost always use a white card base, but I also have this Oyster cardstock from Ellen Hudson that's a pretty pale warm gray. It's neutral and still light, but it adds just a slightly different look. To add this sentiment, I'm going to stick with one of my favorite habits, and that is to use it to cover up a couple of the flaws in my paste. And I position the butterfly so that it looks like it's part of the kaleidoscope of butterflies. Yes, that's what a group of butterflies is called. Isn't that fun? I didn't embellish the sentiment butterfly so that it would fit in with the others, but I did want to add some more sparkle to the card. So instead of my latest favorite, the Crafty Meraki Dewdrops, I grabbed some of these confetti sequins that were a gift with purchase, and I chose colors that worked and glued them down. And then because really the dewdrops are my favorites, I grabbed them too, but this time I glued them into the centers of the sequins, 
So yes, I'm using a favorite habit, but I'm also tweaking it a little too. So here's the card, and I think it feels like me, but also slightly different from one of my normal cards. What do you think? Today's video is part of a hop with the Card Crafters Collaborative, a small group of crafters who get together once each season just for fun to share the joy of card making. It's hosted by Robin, the Delta Crafter, and I've got a link to the next video in the video description below. Now I've got some more ideas in this second card. First, I started the same. I googled, but this time summer colors with blue, and I got this. I translated it into my Catherine Pooler colors, and then I grabbed something new to play with. This is the Confetti Layering Stencil from Alex Siberia. One of my blues is quite dark, and I can see that one of the stencils has fewer holes than the others, so I'll use that one for the suede shoes so it doesn't get too heavy. Another idea for changing things up is to use your tools differently. For instance, I put my white panel down so that the design is going to be slightly off-center on the panel because I'm using the corner of my stamp wheel to line up the layers of the stencil. I started with Cummerbund, and then I moved on to Flirty Fuchsia. I love the design of this stencil set. The pattern's quite regular and similar to another one-layer stencil that I have, but the mix of colors really adds so much fun, even though you could do it with fewer colors or even only one color if you wanted that look. Next, I moved on to Tiki Torch and Limoncello, and then finally the suede shoes on that stencil with the fewest holes. Next, I'm going back to an old school technique to add sparkle, and that is to swink embossing ink all over the panel, making sure to get good coverage. And then I added some halo embossing powder, which is iridescent. I heated it with my heat tool until it was all melted. I use this shoebox lid lined with foil so that I don't have to hold onto the cardstock while I'm heating it. And the foil helps distribute the heat evenly to reduce warping. Now you know that my favorite card format is four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch square. And I'm going to use that size, but I'm going to change the format to a modified Z or Z fold card. Making a Z fold is easy. You start with your card base, just normal, and you fold the front panel back in half. Done. No math, no fuss, but because I want to add a circle panel, I trimmed down the very first panel so that it would be hidden behind the dotty circle. Another fun different thing to try is to do more on the interior of your card. I'm going to do some ink blending along the inside edges with Tiki Torch along the bottom. And then I thought, oh, I'll do it on the outside too. And I reached for the masking tape so I wouldn't blend onto the back of the card. But hey, why not blend onto the back of the card? So I went right along. Then I repeated the blending on the top of the card edges, both front and back, but this time with Cummerbund. I glued the dotty circle to the front panel of the card, and then I trimmed down another white circle to add to the back side, both to clean it up and also to make it a little more sturdy. Here's another way to change things up. Put your sentiment on the inside of the card, whether it's stamped or a die cut. And this time I'm pushing outside my comfort zone and I'm stamping in suede shoes and not my normal black ink. One other little refresh here is that I'm not stamping this Catherine Pooler happy birthday as intended, but I've actually snipped the two words apart so I can line them up in different ways. I'm still stacking them, but I'm justifying them on the right side and I'm checking to be sure that they'll be hidden when the card is closed. Now for the front of the card, since there's no sentiment, you can leave it as is, or you can add something that's birthday themed, like a balloon or a cake. I'm using some die cut numbers to personalize this card for someone who's about to become a teenager. The beachy colors and fun fold format of this card are definitely a change from my regular card making habits, and I didn't even add any dewdrops. These little ideas can have a big impact on how we feel about using what we already have. Whether you use one or several or all of them, it's really as simple as challenging ourselves to break away from our routines and trying to do things a little differently. Which one will you try first? Don't forget that the link to the next video in the hop is in the video description below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.